Hallelujah. Good morning to everyone. Good morning to you wherever you are joining me this morning. I'm glad to have you on this broadcast. It is a thing of joy to bring the good news to you wherever you are. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Our God is a faithful God. He has done all things well. And we celebrate his faithfulness for bringing each and every one of us from far and near. Thank you, faithful Father. Thank you, I am that I am. Thank you, everlasting God. The one that says it and it comes to pass, the one that says it and no man can disannul. We bless your holy name this morning. Let's just go ahead and appreciate him for the privilege he has given to us to see another day. Let's go ahead and appreciate the Almighty God. I want you to appreciate him. I want you to appreciate him. He's a faithful God. He's a blessed God. Hallelujah. There is no one like him. Father, we want to thank you this morning. We want to glorify you. We want to thank you for who you are in our life. Thank you for diverse things that you have done for us. To you be all the glory. To you be all the adoration. We bless you, Lord. Thank you for this week. Thank you for your mighty works. From Monday to now, you have blessed us in diverse ways. What you did in the life of my brother, it is also for me. I celebrate you, Lord. I celebrate you, Lord. I glorify you, Lord. Thank you, faithful Father. Receive praise and adoration. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Oh, we have given thanks rather. Hallelujah. I want us to go before the Lord and commit these morning sessions of this broadcast into the hand of God. I want you to ask God to grant us his presence, speak to us, bless us, give us a hearing here, and cause his presence to bring us to the fullness of his joy. Let's go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we commit this morning broadcast into your hand. We ask that your mighty hand and your mighty presence will envelop us this morning. We ask you, Lord, you will speak to us a definite word in this broadcast. Let it not be the word of my mouth, but let it be your word, do Lord. For your word bring healing. Your word bring deliverances. Your word bring cleansing. Your word bring correction. It bring reproof. Father, we thank you. We glorify you, Lord. Let your presence be evidence. Let it show that we are in your presence. He said, and Mordecai left the presence of the king in a royal apparel. Let people leave your presence today with your favor, with your blessing. Let us leave your presence today with a royal apparel of righteousness, a royal apparel of cleansing, a royal apparel of deliverances, a royal apparel of your mercy, O oh Lord. Thank you, faithful Father. In Jesus' precious name, 
we have given thanks. The Bible speaking, it say, Paul say concerning him, he say he longed to come to the brethren, but Satan has hindered him. He want to say, Lord, every satanic devices that the enemy may have put to, the, to enable anyone to connect or to disrupt this broadcast. Father, we want to say in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we disannul it. We disannul it. We reject it. We frustrate it. Let's go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, any manipulation of the devil to hinder this broadcast, Father, we come against it in the name of Jesus Christ. We come against it in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, faithful Father. Thank you, I am that I am. Thank you, everlasting God. We say, Lord, everyone that have connectivity problem now, Father, Lord, we remove that obstacle. We remove that barrier in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, faithful Father. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. One more time, I want us to give thanks to God for enabling us to be able to have this broadcast this morning. Let's go ahead and give him thanks. Let's thank him for answer prayer. Let's thank him. Father, we thank you. We bless you, Lord. It is in thanksgiving you multiply. Lord, multiply your presence in, our, in, our, in, in this broadcast. Lord, multiply your utterance. Multiply your grace. Multiply your touch. That healing touch that is reaching someone right now. Father, Lord, multiply it to Lord. Multiply it to Lord. That pain is gone in the name of Jesus Christ. That psychological pain, that depression is gone in the name of Jesus Christ. That heaviness of the spirit, that heaviness of the spirit in your heart, I dissolve it in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, faithful Father. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Hallelujah. Once again, I'd like to thank every one of you that is connected already. Thank you for connecting to this uh, uh, to this uh, broadcast. God bless you from wherever you are joining. It is my joy that uh, God is said to be a blessing to you because he said, blessed is the man that he calls to approach him. You are not here in vain. There is something God wants to do in your life, either in the now or in the future. Whatever it is, your portion, you will not miss it in Jesus' precious name. Amen. I'd like to welcome every, each and every one of us who are already online right now. God bless you. I'd like to welcome every one of us. No one is left out. You are most welcome. You are most welcome. I am Pastor Eric Afolabi. Our beloved mommy and sister, Elder Beatrice in Germany, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Diana Chain, God bless you. God bless you. Lillian, you are most welcome. Pastor Truteach, good to see you on this platform. God bless you. God bless you. Pastor Sami, God bless you. Esther Demba, I welcome each and every one of you. None of you is left out. Jeremiah Owino, God bless you. Mary Michael, wherever you are watching us from, God bless you. Our beloved brothers, David Karanga, God bless you. God bless you. Edith Moini, God bless you. God bless you. Brother Silas Okwiri, good to see you. I'd like to thank God for your life and thank God for the life of everyone that is here. Favor and Timothy, God bless you. God bless you. I welcome each and every one of us. God bless you and bless you real good. Good to see every one of you. I'm happy. I'm happy. The Kemo guy, God bless you. And Ben, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. It is well with our soul. It is well with our soul. Hallelujah. Jennifer, God bless you. God bless you. Yes, God bless you. Esther Mukoya, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. It is well with you. It is well with you. Oh, Samuel Chain, God bless you, God bless you. Good to see many of you. Joy Mwenji, God bless you. It is well with your soul. Hallelujah. Uh, I'm bringing this broadcast to you from our studio here in Nairobi. And uh, I'm glad that you are connected as we journey today on the subject of walking in the miraculous. In our last episode or in the last uh, teaching, 
we we dwell on the fact that uh, science and wonder is our birthright. A life of the miraculous is the heritage of anyone that believes in God. Anyone. And I mean anyone. We read in the book of Mark chapter 10 verse 27, God speaking to us from that passage, he says, something are impossible with men. He said, but not with God. For with God, all things are possible. Look, listen to that statement. For with God, all things are possible. Now, when you get to the realm where all things are possible to you, then you have started to defy the law of nature, the law of the natural. Because certain things are meant to be impossible in the natural, but not in the, not in the supernatural. And I remember pointing out to us clearly that the naturality of God is the supernatural. That is, the natural realm of God is the supernatural. Why the supernatural belongs to God. He is a spirit. The Bible says the people that worship him will worship him in the spirit. So there is a platform that enables you to cross from being in the realm of the natural to supernatural. And that is the realm of the spirit. And that is what happens when we give our life to Jesus Christ. He said, whatsoever is born of God, overcome the war. You know why he overcome the war? Whatever is born of God, whatever is born of God is born of the spirit. And whatever is born of the spirit is a spirit. Whatever is born of the spirit is a spirit. So when you are born of God, you are made superior to the natural. That's what that scripture is saying. That's why for, uh, some, uh, for First John says, whatsoever is born of God overcome the wall, overcomes the wall. The world is in the realm of the natural. The supernatural is in the realm of the spirit. So when you are born of God, that is, you are born of the spirit, you become a spirit. And therefore, you are licensed to operate in the, in the realm of the spirit. And the realm of the spirit is superior to the realm of the war. The realm of the spirit is superior to the realm of the war. So as a born again Christian, you are born of the spirit. You are licensed to operate in the realm of the spirit. So you are automatically an overcomer, an overcomer, because you have access to the spirit. And that's why the scriptures say when men, you know, men are saying there is a cast down, you will be saying there is a lifting. Because what limits men will no longer limit you because you are not in that realm. Praise God. I'm sure that is clear. So it is the birthright of everyone that believe. Look at that. Everyone that believe. When you believe, your status is changed. You are changed from the natural to the supernatural. John chapter 1 verse 12, he says, As many that have received him, he gave them power to become. To become. And like I said, you know, salvation is the beginning of is the salvation is the beginning of humanity traveling to divinity when you are born again your humanity is converted to divinity that's what it will be practically impossible if you are still natural for god to be able to live inside you you know, he said, you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. 
Amen. You are the temple. That's why he went for that in the book of John. He said, the, he said greater is he that dwelleth in you than the devil that is in the world. Where you are, you are higher. I, I need to emphasize this. Because perspective determines the activity of our life. The perspective you hold is what gives verdict to your life. You know, God, you are a spirit being. That's why you could host the spirit God. You are a spirit being. That is why you could host the spirit God. I, I, want, to, I want to really emphasize this from different pas passages of the Bible. Now, when God said that he made man in his own image and in his own likeness, God has not lied. He does not lie. He can never lie. So if he say he has made us, that is who we are. Irrespective of what we are going through now, that is who we are. And when you check God, God is a triune being. In other words, God is three persons in one. He's God of the Father, God of the Son, and God of the Holy Spirit. We are also a triune being. We have the body, we have the soul, and all the body and the soul, they now host, they host the spirit. The body is what we see physically. Our souls, which, hold, which consist of our emotion, intellect, they are within the body. That's why when the body dies, man stops to display emotion. You can't react. You can't answer questions. Your intellect are dead. Now, these two now host the spirit. And the spirit is superior to the two. That's why the Bible says that we may through the spirit mortify the works of the body. The spirit can control the two. The spirit of God inside you can control the way you react to situation. The spirit of God inside you can control how your body responds to the environment. You, you know, the Bible says, if the spirit that raised up Jesus Christ dwelleth in you, it will quicken your mortal body. You can see, I, I want you to understand, the spirit realm is superior to the natural. And the day you believe, the day you receive Jesus Christ, he changed your position. He take you from the realm of the natural to the realm of the spirit. And since the spirit is superior to the natural, now you can now operate from the, the, from the superior platform of life, which is the realm of the spirit. Hallelujah. That is the realm of the spirit. So when you believe in Christ, you are translated from the realm of the physical to operate in the realm of the natural. Now, listen, uh, in the realm of the, of, the, of the spiritual. Now, listen to this. Mark 10, 27, say, with God. You see, salvation makes you to unite with God. He said, with God, all things are possible because he's God of possibility. Now, in chapter 9, verse 23, he said, to him that believe all things is possible with him. I need to bring you to that awareness that the moment you receive Christ, you are no longer natural. Now, I, 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 will, I, will, I will drop this point at, at this, at this uh, junction to get you to something deeper. Now, the fact that you are supernatural, hosted by the physical body, now place a demand on you to determine which realm do you want to operate and what kind of life do you want to live because you have access to the two. Spiritual, you are there. Physically, your body and your soul is here. 
And you know, each realm determines the activity that goes on. The realm of the supernatural things are superior. The realm of the natural things are natural as it is, super and natural. Praise God. I said, praise God. Now, that's why we are talking about walking in the miraculous. You remember in the book of Corinthians, the Bible was addressing on the subject of faith. It said, even though we walk, even though we walk in the flesh, we do not operate in the flesh. We walk not by sight, but by faith. So here is it. Here is the bottom line. Which way do you want to operate in? And God gave us advice. As you become a saint, as you become a believer, God wants you to walk in the realm of the supernatural so that you can be in absolute compliance to what or whom he has created you to. Who has he created you to? He created us to have dominion to dominate, to be in charge of life. The first thing God gave to man is power everything. So if you are going to be in charge of everything, you can afford to operate in the natural. You have to go to the superior level, which is the realm of the spirit. That's what salvation did for us. And that's what it will do to you in case you are watching me right now and you are not yet born again. That's what it's going to do for you. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Now, in Colossians 1, he said, He delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us to the kingdom of his dear son. That's where he wants us to operate from. He wants us to operate in the level at which Jesus was operating from. That's what God wants for you and I. Praise God. I said, praise God. I want to establish this because it's the root of walking in the miraculous. You remember in the book of Psalm, the Bible says, a man that is in honor and knoweth it not is like a beast that perish. It has to dawn on you, no matter the situation you find yourself, that look, here is the situation, but this the situation cannot change my makeup. My makeup is that I'm a spirit. But there is a challenge here. That is what gives you power to change the course of things. There, that is what makes you to change the course of things. There has to be that solid awareness within you, like as it was with Joshua. You remember that battle in Ascalon? Joshua knew who he was and the relationship he had with God. And Joseph, uh, uh, Joshua decided to ask God for things that was not possible in the natural. How dare Joshua to ask? Because Joshua knew who he was. The same way if you and I will understand who we are, will be able to place a demand for an action from the realm of the spirit. Since Joshua was born, nobody has ever had control of the sun and the moon. But Joshua knew the father, no one has ever had it, does not exempt him or stop him to have it because of his relationship with God. And therefore he said, Lord, stay the moon, the sun, until I finish this battle. Stay. And the Bible say, and go hell the sun. Remember, God never held the sun, never stopped the sun, or brought it to a standstill until Joshua demanded. Everything was going at a normal course. But Joshua knew who he was before God. And he took advantage of that same scripture, with God, all things are possible. He knew he was in the camp of God. 
So he asked for impossibility to be made possible. I want you to realize salvation makes you to be in the camp of God. Therefore, take advantage of that position and ask what is impossible to become possible in your life. <laughs> hallelujah. I say hallelujah. That is how it that is, that is how to walk in the miraculous. Those are the principal things you must know. One, you must know who you are. Sorry, number one, you must know who God is, I mean, who God is and what he's capable of. You must know your links with him. You must be sure of it. And number three, you must take advantage of that link, that connection and make a demand on what is rightfully belongs to you by your new position. Praise God. By your new position, you begin to place a demand. And this is the two fundamental things, and three fundamental things must be clear if we are going to walk in the realm of the miraculous. Who is God? What is his capacity? What can he do? Who am I? What is my connection with God? What do I benefit by my connection and this current position? An understanding of these two is what will take me to the third step. To place a demand. To place a demand. To place a demand by virtue of my awareness of what God can do and who I am and what is my benefit for being connected to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh my God. Now listen to this. Jesus said, And these signs shall follow them that believe. Because they are believer in my name, they will cast out devil. You have seen the three things. They are connected to me. And therefore, they, they are in my realm. They can operate in my realm. And then, the third leg as they place a demand, this sign shall follow them. It is my prayer that we will just understand these three, uh, three principles. What do you know about God? What is your definition of God? Is it God that cry? Is it God that lament? Is it God that is in charge? The Bible says he does whatsoever pleases him. Now that is God we serve. Full of power, mighty, majesty belong to him. No one can stop him. No one can question him. That's the God that we serve. That's the realm in which he dwells. And then who are we? We became his son via salvation. By grace, through faith. And being his son, we have access to assess his power, his personality. We have that power. We have that privilege. Amen. We have that privilege. And then, what do we do with the privilege that we have? We enjoy it by exercising authority. By exercising authority. He said, Behold, I give you power to tread upon scorpion and serpent, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Those things hurt natural man, but God said he has given you power. The scorpions of life, the deadly situation. David recounting such benefit. He said, Even though I walk in the valley of shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Now, if David can boast of, the, of a life of miraculous in the Old Testament, who through grace, I mean, who by grace and through faith have received Jesus Christ, we have better thing to boast of. We have better thing to boast of. As of the time David was claiming this power, Jesus has not said it is finished. It was still a process. 
If a man in the process have started touching the product, how much more we that are the end of the process? If a man and a man like David are in the middle of the process, we are at the end of the product. The product is finished. If the man in the process has a bite, I'm telling you, we should have a full load. We, you know, the Bible actually says, upon whom the end of the edge, I mean, the end of the world has come. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. I'm sure you are getting this thing. It has to dominate your heart. It has to become a thing that you are not guessing. You are sure. You have, it has to come to that level. Praise God. I said, praise God. Is somebody get what I'm saying? You have to let it sink and behave like Esther. Esther said, if I perish, I perish. If I perish, I perish. Esther stepped out, out of the natural. You have to dare it to get out of naturality and operate from the realm of the spirit. That's why I said signs and wonder in the life of a believer is to happen in the life of a believer in a two way. One, we are to benefit from the realm of the science or the, the realm of the supernatural. is to happen in our life. And then it is to happen through us. We can now take it. That's, that tells you how we are so blessed. We are not to stop. And it to us. I'm so blessed. So refreshing. Mark chapter 7. And I think verse 20. Verse 25. Mark chapter 7. It says, For a certain woman whose younger daughter had an unclean spirit, heard of him, and came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek, a Syro Phoenician by nation, and she besought him that he would cast forth the devil out of her daughter. He wanted signs and wonder, he wanted the miraculous. But Jesus said unto her, let the children first be filled. Let the children first be filled. One thing is for you to have platform. Another thing is for you to enjoy the platform. First, let the children be filled. You see. For it is not meet to take children's bread and to cast it onto dogs. It is not meat. That means it is unacceptable. You see, when you see unbelievers are jumping at certain mercy of God that fall on them, they jump, they knew it is not by their power. They knew God had favored them. You see them jumping and leaping. You hear them say, oh my God, I got... They were not expecting it, but the mercy of God brought the nature of God to them. <laughs> The mercy of God brought the nature of God to them. They knew it was not their bad try. I got the job. They were not expecting it. But for us, that should be our natural and daily experience. Hallelujah. Now, that, that should be. That's why when certain things happen, you see a believer doesn't jump like that. We just say, Father, I thank you because... You, you are just thanking God because you know it is your birthright and God has made it happen. Now, 
Uh, and the verse 13, and she answered and said unto him, Yes, Lord. That's where people get it wrong. They will say, How come Jesus helped the woman? He have called Jesus Lord. He said, Yes, Lord. And the Bible says, No man can call Jesus the Lord except by the Spirit of God. So he actually believed here. He believed in his, in, in his Lordship. And things change. For that. He said, Yet the dogs under the table eat of the crumbs of the children. Verse 29. And he said unto her, For this saying, Go thy way. Look at it. For this saying, including the confession that Jesus is Lord, including calling him the Lord. The saying where the woman started is entirely the whole verse 28. Verse 28 says, And she answered and said unto him, Yes, Lord. That's what part of the saying. Yet the dog under the table, yet the dogs under the table eat of the children's crow. And Jesus said in verse 29, and he said unto her, For this saying, go thy way. The devil is gone out of thy daughter. The, the, the devil doesn't go except certain supernatural power is exerted. And verse 30 says, And when she was come to her house, she found the devil gone out and her daughter laid upon the bed. And her daughter lay upon the bed. You see the realm of the supernatural. The realm of the supernatural. Can you see how it works? The whole activity that happened to that, the daughter of the woman, the woman was not present with Jesus, with her daughter. It is a, it's a, the Bible, we are made to start and say, when she come to her house, so they were operating from another place. But they were not operating physically because if it is physically, they have to be where her daughter was laid. But they were operating in the spirit. And this should not be a surprising thing to us. When you are flying in an aircraft, for instance, and you are high up there, you can see the whole of a city from, your, from, 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 the, from the sky. The whole of a city. If you are flying, for instance, in the city where I live, in Mombasa or in Nairobi, and you are high up, you can see the whole Nairobi round. Just from where you are. But when you are on the ground, you cannot see completely your level, uh, even your complete room. Leave alone the whole plot where you live, the whole compound where you reside. But when you are at the top of the heart of, uh, in, in an aircraft, you can see the whole city. The whole city. Several, while I'm on the aircraft and I'm approaching some city where I've lived or I have detail of, I could even pick the house, a whole house where I live. I will see our house complete or our church, or our premises, or a school, or a whole factory that you are aware of. You can see the whole 20 acres of factory. You can see it where you are. Because now you are in a higher altitude. The same way. But if you are inside the factory, how do you tell everybody I'm seeing the whole of this compound? Not even with CCTV. It's not possible to see the whole. You have to move from one camera to another. But when you are in an aircraft, you see the whole city. And that is what happened to us. When you are in Christ, you are in a higher realm. Remember, Ephesians put the same to us. He said, we are in Christ. And Christ is far above principality and power. Far above principality and power far above authority hallelujah you will walk in that realm in the name of jesus christ you will walk in that realm you know god say he committed all judgment into the hand of the son if the sons are not in charge if they are powerless god cannot commit all judgment into our hands may the good hand of god be with you 
May you have a clear understanding of what I'm talking this morning. Some few years back, I, I, I decided to, I, 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 because I'm conscious by reason of uh, some of this knowledge, I, 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 I exercised my authority one day. I was traveling. My wife was traveling. I think I was heading to Nigeria and my wife was traveling to Mombasa. And both of us were in Nairobi, in Kenya. And uh, I sat on a, on a three-seater uh, coach and my passport fell inside the three-seater. I didn't know. I know those of you understand what I'm saying. When you stand up, the, the chair, we, the, the, the passport, you can't see the passport because it's already inside the fold of the chair uh, towards the armrest. And I was looking for it. We were locking the door. And as my custom is, before I leave my house, I will check especially my traveling document. I can't find my passport. And we were looking for it, looking for it, you know, checking everywhere. You know, your widest imagination at that time can never go naturally to the seat. You are looking at the seat, it's empty, there is nothing. And I said, I began by saying, Holy Spirit, show me where my passport is. Friends, every believer has an extra eyes. <laughs> and you know what you see determine what you possess. Every believer has an extra eyes. Holy Spirit is what is, is our extra eyes. The Bible says he searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. And as soon as I said the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit just told me, check where you sat on the chair. And I found it. Now, before I could do that and get the passport out, time has gone. You are supposed to check in two hours. We spend a lot of time looking for it. We're late. And I stood there as we were uh, as I pick my bag and I say, Lord, I cause a delay in the airport. Either the flight delay or there is a delay. Let there be a supernatural delay. I must catch up. If there is a speed that made, oh my God, Elijah in Old Testament to outrun an horse of Ahab, there is a, there is a power that lives within us. To reshape an event of life. I'm sharing this. And my wife could bear me witness. And some people I shared the testimony when I came back. For no reason. JIK is an international airport. Highly recognized. For no reason. Power went off. There was a power disruption in the whole airport. So they could not check in. So local was delayed. International was delayed. I left my house by faith that I will catch up because time was totally against. And I get to the airport and I ask. And I was told there was power interruption around the time we pray. Somebody said, ah, that is by chance. Was a life was 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 Joshua owned by chance? Was it by chance? It wasn't. Was the hand of God on Jonah that made him to cover a journey of three days in one day? Was it by chance? If it is a chance, I want to be in the realm of that chance. If it's by coincidence, now I want to live inside that coincidence. So that it can always be coincident. As long as it favor my cause and establish who I am on the earth. I love it. I went to, I, 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 took, I took my wife to the local. I went to international. Both of us travel safely. Praise God. And, and, and some of us have done it many times. That's why we are never afraid. Please, you can argue from now to tomorrow. Leave inside your argument. Let me live inside my miraculous life. That's why, that's why sometimes I don't entertain argument. God told me long time, my word is not for argumentation, but for manifestation. Don't waste your time arguing with people who say it cannot be. Do you love what I've said? Do you love the life of the miraculous? Then focus on it. Grow yourself into it and begin to enjoy it. Everybody take the reward of their labor. 
If you labor spiritually, you live in, you, you, you take a reward of spiritual labor. Those who are arguing, leave them. One of the end time spirit that will bring perilous time upon the nation is the spirit of argument, doubt. Doubt. Walking with your natural sense. No. The supernatural I see there. The supernatural I see there. And God have made it for his children. Now, if you look at Revelation, you will see something there. Uh, he said, uh, Revelation chapter 22 and verse 12. He said, and behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me to give every man according to his, according as his work shall be. According as his work shall be. And the Alpha and the Omega. The beginning and the end. The first and the last. Look at verse 18. He said, Blessed are they that do his commandment, that they may have right to tree of life. That they may have right to tree of life and may enter in through the gate into the city. And then look at verse 15. He said, for without are the dogs. For without are the dogs. And sorcerers, and warmonger, and murderer, idolater, whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify unto you this thing in the churches. I am not, uh, sorry, I am the root and the offspring of David. And the bright and morning star. Praise the Lord. One of the angels testifying to you this morning. God have enabled me to bring the word of life to you this morning. Please choose to live the life of the supernatural. Live in the realm of the supernatural. Don't mind those who say it doesn't exist. You were not born here to come and argue and debate. You were born to come and believe God and walk by live by faith. Praise God. I said praise God. May the good hand of God be with you. I believe I bring the word of life to you this morning. He said without are the dogs. The dogs are the unbelievers. And we saw how Jesus used the same word to that woman. The, the children must be filled first. And it is not right to give children bread to the dogs. In other words, we are on the first priority of God for the life of the miraculous. In closing, have you seen a father who make his own children his last priority in living his kind of life. I want, to, I want it to be a food for thought for you today. That is, you are wealthy. And it's your son you consider to be the last person to live as a wealthy person or a wealthy child. We all know it's a, it's a common sense. Every father wants his child to live his kind of life. Life that reflects him. Our family is always on our top priority list of people who reflect our lifestyle. Praise God. That's why you take your children to the best school. Because you, have, you can afford it. Why will God have all that power and make you the least on his priority life on who we live in the natural he cannot do that. He's not a wicked God. I pray for you this morning that you will begin to accept the capacity of your God, his ability, his power. You will let your mind agree that this is who God is. You will also know who you have become by believing in him. You become him. You become your belief. And then number three, you begin to place a demand a demand. When an aircraft delay in the airport, you just walk to the counter that they have told you that will take care of you. And you demand what you want to eat. By virtue of the delay, they cater for you. They don't need to know you. And if you're in the airport, you don't know certain available, you will still stay in hunger. And that is what is happening. 
But today we have known. We are going to take advantage of who we are and call on God to establish our righteousness, to establish our prosperity, to establish our healing, that we begin to live and be in charge, absolutely in charge of our destiny, of our ministry, of our family. Thank you very much for listening to me this morning. This is the word of the Lord for you on the subject of walking in the miraculous. Of the subject of walking in the miraculous. Those three things will make you to walk in the miraculous. He made Joshua. He made Jesus to walk on the water. He made Peter to walk on the water. When Jesus said to Peter, come, Peter knew who asked him to come. He has no occasion to doubt. He stepped on the water. It was when he doubted he was going back to the natural. It is well with you. As you go this morning, the Lord go with you. The peace of God abide with you. I'm glad you have enabled me to bring the word of life to your comfort zone. And I look forward to hear your testimony. Begin to place a demand. We'll be looking at how to place a demand as, uh, uh, as God permit us, I think precisely on Friday. How now you begin to enjoy this thing. It is well with you. May the Lord bless you. If you are there, you are not born again. I want to invite you to the realm of the supernatural. Remember I said, salvation is the beginning of humanity to the journey of, the, of divinity. Right now, if you want to give your life to Christ, I would like to pray with you. Uh, let's go right now. Say after me, Lord Jesus, thank you for today. I am a sinner. But today, I invite you into my life. Forgive me my sin and my trespasses. Wash me by your precious blood. I believe in the work of Calvary. And I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you, faithful Father, in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Right, right now, I want you to look for a Bible-believing church and begin to fellowship there. You will never be the same. And you can also look for me by checking some of these contacts and locate me, and uh, I will be there also to be able to assist you in whatever way I can to see that you develop. Praise God. This morning, the rest of us, as you go, the Lord go with you. It's also good we worship the Lord with our substance. It is part of the, the thing we'll be learning, how to place as a, as, a, as a child of God, how to work in miraculous finances, how to work in the realm of financial breakthrough. And one of it, one of it, not the only way, one of it is by blessing the work of God, is by sowing our seed, is by, is by worshiping God with our substance. We do not worship him with our mouth, with our presence alone, but with our substance. And this morning, I believe there are many of you who have enjoyed this ministry, who are benefiting from this morning glory, who want to say, let me advance it even with my resources. And as you give that, give that offering this morning, the Lord will multiply it back to you. The Lord will multiply it back to you. The Lord will multiply it back to you. Breakthrough will come your way. I pray that before the middle of the day of the nation in which you are, there will be a major financial breakthrough for you. God cannot receive from you and not multiply back to you. He multiplied the seed so As you face the day, I pray over your seed right now. Heavenly Father, accept this offering. Use it for the advancement of your kingdom and in return, bless your people. Prosper them, O Lord. You never abandon seed. You cause the seed to bring forth. I see that seed multiplied to a hundredfold. Thank you, faithful Father. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Join me also. I must not forget to invite all of you. Join us in the ongoing prophetic fast of the 10th month. It's a seven-day prayer and fasting which commences on Monday and we are on it. So join us this evening as we have intercession. We are praying every day. Come online. We are praying. We are interceding every day. Until you have a seed in the earth, you have no hope of a future. Have a seed of prayer in the earth. And you will have a place when God begins to bring the fruit of those prayers. Join us at 5.45 at East Africa time this evening. And it continue to our Sunday services. God bless you. God bless you. It is well with you. A winning Christian is a praying Christian. It is well with you. God bless you. See you in our next broadcast. May the Lord bless you and prosper you. Amen. Have a blessed day in Jesus' precious name.